The phone had kicked sunrise out of bed that morning and me along with it. Some rich dame calling herself Felicity Van Buren. Like that meant anything to a hungover stiff like me. I told her I wasn't taking any new cases. But when she told me where she lived, I changed my mind quicker than a Kennedy who just turned down a free drink. 1427 Rushmore Avenue. The side of town people like me only dreamed about. That kind of address stunk of old money and I aim to take my kick at that can. My husband was an aficionado. Yeah, what he did with his penis was his own business, lady. That's not what I meant, but thanks. He collects art. Or should I say, collected. He's dead. And you want to know who sent him off to dance school in a new hat? If that means who killed him, yes. Sounds like the kind of tune John Law dances to. Why me? Some of my husband's business dealings were... How can I put this? Save the sugar coating, baby. I ain't no fresh out of the oven cookie grandma made so you'd feel all warm and loved. I had some friends down at the station run a little background check on your late husband. He was dirtier than a chain smoking coal miner's lungs. I told you I didn't want the police involved. John don't know Jack and that's how things will stay until I decide otherwise. I'm sorry. It's just this whole thing, my husband. It's got me shaken up, is all. Yeah, we've all been on that crazy roller coaster, baby. It's like having two hydrocephalic weasels fight to the death in your pants. I, I thought I'd get myself a drink. Can I offer you anything? Yeah, I have seven whiskey sours. So this was how the other half lived. I wondered how many bikini lines her husband had waxed to afford all this. Sure, crime pays, but sooner or later every two-bit hood gets in the way of the new kid on the block and ends up paying his dues and blood. Felicity's husband was no different, and here she was all broken up about it. Leastwise, she put on one hell of an act. I had a pretty good idea who'd done the killing, but I meant to string her along for a while. She had the dough and she was desperate. And besides, part of me liked just looking at her. The part of me that really likes having sex with women. I decided to double my usual fee. So, where do I go from here? Straight to your purse, baby. I don't come cheap. Your late husband was a twisted little freak. You both know a man can't put a down payment on this kind of lifestyle by putting tight shoes on circus bears. He made his share of enemies. My hands are going to get plenty dirty. What'll it cost to get them squeaky clean? Sixty bucks up front. And the same on the back end. And I'll need some walking around money. Walking around money? Twelve dollars a day. One week in advance. You're crazy. That's more than Mel told me I got for fixing the Ali Liston fight. Well, then I guess we're through here. Wait. All right. I'll pay up. Yeah, I thought you'd see things my way. Now what? Square one, dollface. How Mr. Aficionado meet his maker. It was horrible. Someone. He was butchered with an axe. Well, then it was that guy. <gasps> Thanks for greasing my liver, peppermint pants. I'll expect the rest of the money in my office by the end of the week.
The name's Patterson. Butch Patterson, P.I. I'm the sap people call when the regular law leaves them hanging out like a pair of French cut panties dangling on a thin plastic clothesline begging for some dysfunctional pervert to come along and make them another twisted ride at Johnson World, the sick theme park in his pants. That's right, I'm a gumshoe, a P.I., a private dick. Well, mostly private. Except for that one time at the petting zoo, but I was just putting the finishing touches on a three-week coconut rum binge and I was trying to work out some issues. I'd just wrapped up my latest case and I was as tired as a lap dancer two months behind in the rent. Besides, Lady Luck was playing my tune. I had a C note in my pocket and a virgin bottle waiting for me at the office. Good days are few and far between in this putrid cesspool of a city. So when one comes along, that's reason enough to have a few drinks and let your pants down. You got any copies of the New Yorker left? Sold out. What about Omni? Don't carry it. New Republic? Uh, sorry. Christian Science Monitor. No. big ceramic cat you got up there. What? You heard me, smartass. A big ceramic cat. Stumbled into the office and fixed myself a drink. Then I faked being taller. Then I worked on my tripod. Then I thought about man's inner spiritual journey and his metaphysical quest for redemption while standing like a flamingo with scoliosis. Then I pretended to be a robot for a while. Finally, I decided to call Frank before sitting down to relax. I didn't know who Frank was. I just picked his name at random out of a phone book a few years earlier. Hey, Frank, I'm banging your wife. God bless the classics, I thought, as I slumped down on the couch to catch some tube. I settled on a Gary Coleman retrospective on the Arts and Entertainment channel and decided to play a little game with my goldfish Lucky. We all loved it at first. But after a few years, it started to grate on everyone. Anyhow, by this time, Dana Plato was pretty heavy into the booze and pills. So, long story short, Dana waltzes in one morning, three sheets to the wind and loaded for bear. No sooner are the cameras rolling when Gary had libs this reel upstage and what you talking about? So, all of us were pissed off. But Dana, whoa, she lost it. And that was far and away the worst dwarf beating I have ever seen. And I've been doing sitcoms for 30 years. It's your quarter, fruitcake. Hey, how you doing? Yeah, sure, that sounds like a good time. Perfect. Yeah, I'll see you there. When I arrived, 
arrived at the bar, no one in attendance registered as familiar, so I picked up a table by myself. The bartender told me to put it down or get out, so I decided to order a drink. Nice night, eh? Yeah, I wouldn't know, prick. Come again? Give me two fingers of scotch. These two. And a seven beer chaser. That's a lot of booze. My door don't swing that way, buttercup. So if you're through trying to get into my pants, why don't you make smart and hustle up those drinks I asked for? It was like deja vu all over again. One drink soon turned into 17 and I was in a funk. Time passed like a glaucoma-ridden senior citizen in a strange town driving a really big unfamiliar car right after an enormous snowstorm, which is to say not quickly. Along about six or eight hours later, I got to ruminating on the whole affair. I don't know anyone named Ishmael. Must have been a wrong number. I was feeling kind of fatuous sitting there all alone, which frightened me because I had no idea what the word meant. I needed a plan and more booze. Hey, Cupcake! You think you can stop undressing me with your eyes long enough to bring me some more booze? I decided to grab a handful of swizzle sticks and head out to the alley and neuter a few stray cats. Do my part for Bob Barker and all. You know the routine. But apparently, Cupid had other plans. She promenaded in like a hillbilly debutante in brand new overalls. Maybe my mojo wasn't broken after all. She looked like something Rockwell would have painted if you were drunk and retarded. But by all the glory of what's right in this world, she was built like a woman should be. Two arms, two legs, a torso, and a head. It was obvious her parents had never dabbled in thalidomide or the ritualistic disfigurement of their offspring in some cheap sordid bid to align their souls closer to Satan. Her summit was circumscribed by twin flanks of greasy hair that stuck to the sides of her face like two slabs of warm lard on a fat man's stomach. She had the kind of looks that would make the Pope forgive you for touching yourself. I could tell by the distinctly arousing way she'd strapped on her wooden leg. She'd come in looking for more than a few drinks. The first bottle I threw missed by a good ten feet. The second one was like a Mitch Williams World Series pitch. I decided to improve my odds. Game, set, and match, baby. Our gazes linked in premonition of impending coitus as I sauntered over with all the confidence of a bulimic at a pie-eating contest. The name's Butch. Eileen. Yeah, I'll say you do. It's likely that gimp leg of yours. <laughs> I decided to see if I couldn't get her nice and loaded. Hey, tap shoes. Give me 14 beers and a triple zombie. Oh, I don't drink beer. Yeah, I figured as much. That's why I didn't order you any. I got a table in the corner. Well, you're awful sure of yourself. You don't know the half of it, Sparkle Pants. And the half you do know is probably two-thirds wrong. So you do the math. I don't follow you. You will, baby. You will. Are you celebrating or mourning? What if I told you both? I'd say you were an obsequious idiot. Exactly. That doesn't make sense. Slow down, sister. You don't get a place in line at the crotch buffet that easy. <laughs> what does a guy like you do for money? I'll punch a poodle in the stomach for nine dollars. Any poodle. No, no, I meant, uh, what does a guy like you do for a living? I'm a P.I., a gumshoe. Private dick. Oh, you're not that guy from the petting zoo, are you? No, no, I was a, a different guy. He did a lousy robot. I think he lives in the States now. You wouldn't know him. You know, I hear that llama's never been the same. Yeah, well, maybe the llama had a few problems to begin with. Maybe. 
I don't know much about llamas. You and Shakespeare both, honey, so why don't you drop the little song and dance before I reverse both our hysterectomies? Oh, sorry. Don't sweat it, Daffodil. I know it's tough to concentrate when your mind's swimming with the image of what I'd look like lathered up in cooking oil taking a night course in small engine repair. Is it that obvious? Everything's obvious if it's clearly explained to you and you have a general knowledge base that places all the information into its proper context. Yeah. Life's too short to get hung up on this, baby, so welcome to Dreamsville. Does that answer all your questions? Mm, can I keep it? Knock yourself out, Chrysanthemum. I got plenty more. Hey, careful you don't crease my ass. Judging from this photo, somebody already has. You want to go back to my place and wreck the sheets? Nobody's busting any pinatas tonight, monkey dancer. Why don't you polish your tiara someplace else? And while you're at it, I'll have nine gin and tonics. Don't you think you were a little hard on him? You want hard, baby? How about long division? Well, he's just a kid. He doesn't know any better. Every kid's got to grow up someday. <laughs> Tell that to Webster. She knew just what buttons to push to make it hurt, but I respected her moxie. Knock, knock. Who's there? Bang. Bang who? Me, baby. <sighs> what are you afraid of, dollface? Spiders. That, that blue stuff barbers keep their combs in, uh, Nazis riding in zeppelins, and and love. Love's for suckers, baby. And Butch Patterson don't play that game. I know just the type of guy you are. You're the type of guy who juggles women as if they were really oozy, wet, squishy pieces of raw meat. Say, like liver or kidneys. Now, you got me all wrong, baby. I don't juggle women like they were really oozy, wet, squishy pieces of raw meat, say, like liver or kidney. They're far too heavy to do this. There's something I gotta tell you, Butch. To be absolutely honest, I came in here tonight looking for more than a few drinks. I came in here tonight looking to get lucky. My heart exploded like someone had just given it a barium enema. She was just like all the others, using me for my fish. It was just one of those days, I thought, as I lit my last cigar and wet my pants. This is Ishmael. You can go straight to hell. Oh, hey, Blanche, how's it going? Yeah, I know the place. Hey, you sound real pretty like when I'm this hungover. Yeah, don't mention it. Yeah, I'll see you shortly. got a proposition for you. Great. There's a hotel around the corner where the manager owes me a favor. You'll have to do most of the work, though. I'm pretty beat from legging it up here. Tommy Rubella. Ever heard of him? We don't run in the same circles, Blossom Blouse, but I know his story. I'm working on an expose that's going to win me the Pulitzer, and I need a favor. What's in it for me? The satisfaction of helping a lady out? He's got a girl he keeps on the side. Hitler's her name. Debbie Hitler? And she's got some information that'll go a long way towards helping me out. 
Sounds interesting. Why don't we continue this little tete a tete over drinks? Because it's 8.30 in the morning and I'm not an alcoholic? Look, I've got to get back to work. I'm doing the story on my own time, and if my boss finds out I'm billing company time for it, he'll be after my ass. Tell him the line starts behind me. I'll call you tomorrow and let you know where you can accidentally make the acquaintance of Debbie Hitler. I didn't like the idea of crossing paths with Tommy Rubella and this Hitler dame, but Blanche had the kind of looks that can make a man do a whole lot of things he didn't like. The little voice in the back of my head told me I better be real careful. But brother, you can take this to the bank. Careful ain't my game. Next on Butch Patterson. And one more thing. That reporter friend of yours, the dame, tell her to keep her nose out of my business. Otherwise, it might get broken. Be ashamed to have to mess up such a pretty face. Hey, pal. Until you've been arrested for public indecency at the petting zoo, don't talk to me about shame. You're real romantic, Butch. Yeah, I'll say. If I had a nickel for every time I heard that, I'd be able to fill up the end of a tube sock with loose change and beat a beaver to death. So that's why I can't listen to Handel's Messiah without putting on a cowboy hat and pissing my pants. What are you thinking about, Butch? Fat naked men. Sweaty ones. Hey, are you double-jointed? 